Thank you for joining me for another 10 minute Thursday yearbook edition. For today's video I'll be doing advanced photo peak. I'll cover how to do double exposure, how to do some dual lighting effects within photo P, as well as some other tips and tricks. So let's get started. The first effect I'm going to show you is how to do this dual lighting without using color gels or color light bulbs. So let's go to file, open, and open up my original photo I used. Next step from here I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And the reason for that is this is actually going to be the layer I'm going to paint on that color I want to appear. And so I'm going to go over to my brush tool. I'm going to change my color to whatever color I want. And for this example, I'm going to use that red again. And the other thing I normally would have you change right away is your brush hardness. And the reason for that is you don't want to add 100% because it's going to really create these harsh lines in your photo. And so just to kind of show you, if I paint right now and then I come over to my layers tab and change this to soft light, you're going to see all those harsh lines right now and that's not what we want. So we're going to delete this layer and do it again. This time change my brush hardness down and you can pick and choose which one works best for you. I'm going to do about like a 43%. And so now I'm going to brush down and you see it kind of creates this like light red on the edges and that's kind of what we're looking for. And so now when I go to normal and change that to soft light it blends straight in. And so when I create a new layer, and I'm going to do the other side now, so change my red. Let's go to my layers tab, do soft light again. Those colors blend in seamlessly instead of creating these harsh lines. And so you can do these with different colors. The thing you want to note when picking your colors for something like this, making sure you're picking colors that complement the area and make things still stand out. Is like for instance if I remove this red and let's say I go with like a blue and then change it to soft light the blue is going to be very similar to the original photo because of the jean jacket so you may want to pick around play around with different colors and find the ones that work best and match well for you and the next effect I kind of want to show you is how to do this dual tone effect with two different images and it's actually very simple and so I'm going to go to File, Open. I'm going to open up my original photo I want to use. And then instead of opening the second image, I'm actually going to grab it from my computer and just drop it over it. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top image, right click on it, choose Blending Options. And all I'm going to do is actually shut off the channels. And so I can shut off more. So if I just keep the blue, I get a blue and yellow. If I just keep the green, I get a green and purple, pink. And then if I just keep the red, I get that red and blue I had before. And once you're done and you're happy with it, all you do is hit OK and you're done. So the next one I want to do is this cool kind of double exposure. So I'm going to go to File, Open. So just like the previous image, I'm going to go to my desktop to grab the photo. And then I'm going to expand this to the size that I wanted to because this is a landscape photo. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Layers tab and choose lighting. Um, it basically fits the area of my original photo. With this feature you do want to make sure you have a very clean white background is what works best for something like this. And now I can move this photo around, readjust, and resize just like before to get more of that facial, facial features. But sometimes I kind of like my positioning and I just want to bring out the face just a tad bit more. So to do that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask layer. And then I'm going to come over here and grab my brush tool. And the thing you want to make sure is that these two colors are black and white. That's not really a black. So let me go to black. Now I have my white. And then you can keep your hardness wherever you want. It doesn't have to be fully hard. Um, but the main thing you want to make sure is your opacity. And the reason for that is if I use 100% opacity, it's going to really create these harsh look on your image and that's not what we want. So I'm going to undo all that and I'm going to reduce this to about like 62%. Kind of still get some of that background but you're now enhancing the photo a little. I still feel that's a little too much so I'm going to even go lower maybe like 19%. And so that's a little more of what I want and I can keep going and do another layer 
right in those same areas and it's going to bring out the more color and the more of that person. So let's close out of this and move on to the next step. So the next one I want to show you is a really popular one right now I feel and it's that neon effect. And so I'm going to go to file, open. I'm going to use my pen tool just that way I have more control of the shape and the direction. And so I'm going to click here, click here, 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 and here. I know that's not a perfect square. Sometimes I may not want one. But if you do want to make a perfect square, you can come over here, direct select tool. Make sure you're on the direct select, not the path tool. Because with the direct select tool, it will allow you to adjust your dots however you want. There we go. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my shape. I'm going to go to blending options. And then I'm going to go to outer glow. I'm going to select outer glow. And then I can choose what kind of opacity I want, what kind of size I want. So right now I kind of did a white stroke. I can go back, change my stroke color to be yellow. Um, but I do have to close this window. So if you notice that, I can't just change it. I have to close this, then come over here, change my yellow, and then go back. Or I can do blue, and then right click, blending options, do the same thing, outer glow, select that area, change this to blue. Or you can have two different colors. It's really up to you what kind of color choice you want. I can make it be a darker blue outer glow with a light blue tone inside. So you can really have some fun with that. And so, like I said, all you're going to do is adjust the size of your glow and adjust the opacity of it. Do you want a very harsh glow or do you want a more subtle, just simple glow? And then you hit OK. Once you do that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a mask layer. And then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go back to my brush tool. And I'm going to bring back my opacity back to 100%. I'm going to bring the hardness just a little bit, but not fully all the way there. And I'm just going to start brushing here. So there we go. Then I can move down here, do the same thing. And there we go. So now when I click the background layer, you just see the glow right behind the person. And the person's in front of it. The last image I want to show you is how to do a black and white background, but with a color image. So creating that kind of frame look that really draws your eye to that section. Here we go. We got an original color image. And so the first thing I want to do is actually duplicate this layer. I'm going to change this background layer to a black and white image. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. Um, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I explained how as I adjust these channels, it's adjusting the original colors in the image. So if I was to shut this off, it's adjusting the original reds. We all have some red and orange in our face, um, the reds of the shirts, all that stuff. And so it's adjusting all that. Same thing with the cyans and greens and all that stuff. So once you're happy with it, all you do is just minimize that and you're done. And now you have your black and white image. But I still have this color image. So the next thing I want to do, because I just want a perfect square, I'm just going to go to my rectangles tool, get that. Um, if I hold down my shift as I'm creating it, it will create a perfect square. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change my stroke to be nothing. I'm going to add a fill color. It doesn't matter what color because this is what the image is going to replace. And so the next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to duplicate the shape real quick. And then now, because if you saw in the previous image, I had this white border effect, I'm going to change this shape to be a border instead now. So the next thing I'm going to do, now that I have my border, I'm going to shut that off real quick. I already have my black and white photo down here, and I have my photo and my new shape. I'm going to move my layer up, so that color image above my shape, and then I'm going to right click on this and choose clipping mask. And what that does is it takes that shape and only places whatever image fits in that shape. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on my border and there we go. It created that frame look of you're looking into a person. And you can do this exact same effect with text as well. So if I was to create a text box, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this background layer. I'm going to bring this above my text. 
and do the same thing. Right click on it, clipping mask, and now it is within my tux. And so I can move it around, that way I can get a different view and see something else. And there you go. So you can do that within text, you can do that within images. It's all a matter of making sure you're placing the image over the shape or text you want it to replace and then choose clipping mask. And that's a wrap. Thank you again for joining me today. If there's a cool effect you want to learn in Photopea that I haven't covered before, please comment below so I can add that to my next video. And also, if you haven't seen my basic video tutorial, I did put the link in the description below. Hope you have a wonderful day and see you next Thursday.